So my name is Andrew, and I am a, a one-man team of, from a team called Death Scratch Games, and my title is 2D Animation and 3D Games, How and Why. And I uh, made two different games uh, that, well, well, one game is available right now, it's called Drew and the Floating Labyrinth. And there's a second game that I'm working on right now, hopefully it'll be available this summer, called Unfinished An Artist's Lament. And you can tell from these screenshots that the characters are hand-drawn, but these are third-person uh, 3D games with no restriction to the camera like any normal 3D game. You can rotate the camera from any direction. The games themselves are not just really special, but the reason I want to talk about them and why I spent so much time promoting them here in Toronto this weekend is because of that uh, style, because the characters are hand-drawn. And this is an example of how any game, uh, no matter what you think of, not just 2D games, can feature 2D animation. And I really like 2D animation, I'm a fan of it, and in the last uh, decade or so there's been a really steep decline ever since computer animation in films has uh, caught on. And one of the reasons for that might be because computer animation is a little bit easier to animate, uh, despite uh, not, not being as intuitive to make. But personally, I like the style of hand-drawn and hand-painted art. If you look in some uh, 3D uh, uh, yeah, uh, movies, you can still find the samples of it where the artists do use 2D animation, because I think artists do want the variety and the diversity in their art. So they are trying to fit, fit it in somewhere. And for games, the style that I'm going to talk about is similar to methods that you would see in older uh, first-person games when 3D modeling wasn't possible. And uh, more recently, some games still uh, try it today in a similar way. Garden Arium is also available upstairs. And uh, they have a really cool style where you can rotate the camera in one uh, direction. But I'm talking about rotating the, uh, the camera in uh, all directions, up, down, left, and right. And I like to call this 3D cell animation because cell uh, suggests flat, but I'm going to put those flat surfaces in, in the 3D space. And uh, for the record, I used uh, Unity 3D to make this, but you could use any game engine, I think. So to start, you would have a 3D uh, object that represents your character, and I just put flat uh, perspective planes around it. That would represent a perspective of the character, depending on how you're looking at it. I think for my games, I use about 24 uh, perspective planes around the character. And uh, after that, you want, you want to tell what uh, plane should be visible at any given time. There's a simple way to do that. If you draw a line from the camera to the center of the character, uh, whatever plane is closest uh, that's uh, intersecting in that line, that's the one you make visible. And uh, that, that's it. So th there's no real trick to this method. It, it, it's really simple. I think that a lot of people assume that 3D uh, animation is the way to go, but because so many people just assume that, they ignore uh, obvious solutions to do different styles with. And there are other ways, uh, other uh, little tricks that you could do. You can uh, separate the character's animation into uh, uh, different parts and modulize it. And instead of a flat surface, you can use a curved surface to put the, uh, the sprite on, which gives you some uh, fake uh, th th 3D shading to make it a little bit more uh, interesting. And aside from that, uh, there's a few uh, uh, problems with this method. Well, one, it takes up a lot of RAM and system memory. You're, you're having HD textures, that's what I'm talking about. And uh, that, that does fill up space such that older uh, consoles and computers probably can't run this. But today, modern uh, consoles and modern computers should be OK with it. And uh, additionally, you, well, I'm talking about hand drawing every frame. There's no trick or magic. Uh, about hand drawing and everything, that, that, so it takes a lot of time to do. And I haven't done this yet, uh, too much yet, other than what you see here, but one other way to go is maybe uh, applying this method of perspective planes around different parts of a skeleton. That would uh, probably save a lot of work for the animation part. And there's, uh, uh, additionally, there's uh, uh, extra work you can see from other projects. There's a Japanese game called Time, time of Eternity. There's a, a sprite sh shader called Sprite Lamp uh, from an indie developer in Australia. And there's a new uh, Japanese uh, tool called Live2B Euclid, which is doing something similar to me, but it's not uh, released yet. And there's a whole bunch of research that you can look up for non uh, for re 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 realistic rendering that also tries other methods uh, to also use 2D art in 3D spaces. We have top men and women working on this right now. But the problem is that you probably haven't heard of any of this, because no one is using it. That's the problem. It's really up to the artists, not just the scientists and the innovators. We need artists to use this stuff and uh, find ways to practically uh, show it off to people, to have uh, people uh, understand it and uh, realize the potential of it. So I'm talking about innovation, not just the style that you want to create, but think of new, brand new ways to make that style. Because uh, you shouldn't just assume, assume that 3D animation is the one only way to do it. Maybe you don't want to assume that 2D animation is the only one way to do it. There's a whole bunch of different ways that you could do things, and you, some that just don't exist yet. I don't want comics versus games, which is the, uh, what our uh, section is called. I want comics in games. I want com uh, games that look exactly like comics, exactly like what you buy here in books. I want to be able to play any 3D game that I want that looks exactly like that. And I'm not a professional artist. I'm a university student who studies artificial intelligence. I'm doing this for fun. <laughs>
So if I can do this, imagine what you people, you people are com comic artists, comic fans, some of you are animators, game designers, some of you can make some fantastic stuff using this method or other methods that some maybe are in the back of your head that you don't know about yet. And sometimes if one method isn't the, the right way, try putting everything you don't know aside and start from scratch. And that's my motto. Thank you.